think when you love somebody and you feel that you can't give them, um, well, in this case, it was children. What do you say to your parents when they say, you know, uh, when they ask you the question, where are the kids? So sometimes at times I kind of wish oh, I could die, then he could marry a lady who could give him children, you know? And there will come a point in time after three years, what do you say to them? How God failed? Yeah, I remember he said, uh, he said, I didn't marry you for children. <laughs> We got married uh, in November 1989. We were believing for um, a large family, at least three kids. Right after we got married, in December, we left for Cairo, Egypt. And so in the first day, it wasn't so bad, in a sense, because we were just having fun exploring the land, doing things together. The second year, wondering, hey, what happened? What's happening? And so we decided uh, to go and visit a fertility doctor, a gynecologist, an Egyptian guy, and we went to his clinic. So I think he set uh, Rachel off on a fertility pill course to increase the ovulation. Right at that point in time, we had an accident. I think a cyclist came crashing right into me and then I actually had my menstruation. So that kind of dashed my hopes, you know, and uh, I think that was a point I told the Lord. I said, Lord, if you don't do it, no other method's going to help. And then we just took a stand. No more methods, no more formulas. This is Lord, if your word says that we should have children, your word says that we should be fruitful and multiply. And that's the very first blessing that you, you pronounced on Adam and Eve. That's ours. In the third year, we're still in Egypt. And then, you know, you find your parents start asking you, what happened to the children? Any good news? <laughs> yeah. It was tremendous pressure. And, um, you know, you come to a point where you just get so fed up, you ask questions like, where's God in all of this? You know, um, I thought I trusted him. No, we were, we were talking about this and she said, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm sorry I can't give you children. Uh, and then she said this, which really, uh, which really hurt me at that time. She says, um, so why don't you, um, I, I wish I died so that you can marry someone else and that someone else can give you a child. And um, uh, that, that really, uh, that really broke my heart. And I was very adamant and strong about it. I said, if I didn't have a child with you, I'll not have a child with anyone else. Um, yeah, there were times we despaired, and, you know, and we kind of, you know, gave up hope many times. Um, but I came to a point where there was so much of mixed uh, messages, like, is it God's will? Uh, maybe you're in sin, that's why you're not having kids, you know. And finally I got so upset, I told the Lord, that's it. I'm going straight into your word. Every person in the Bible who asked for a child, yeah. got a child. And I think it was that very um, season or seasons where we started building ourselves up in God's word and you become strong. And when I really got built up on the word, I think that's when the devil knew he couldn't, he didn't have a chance yeah, anymore. True. We have four children. Our eldest is Isabel. She was born in 1996 and she'll be 15 this year. And that'll be followed with by um, Shem, who is 10 years old, and Joel, who's nine. And then our last, our baby, is seven years old. That's Ariel. Looking back, uh, seven years uh, that we waited for Isabel. If you were to ask me this question, if I regret it or take anything away from it, I'd say no. I really believe it has taught us so much. Number one, it has taught us to stand on God's word and to see God deliver. Number two, in the waiting process, we've learned to have fun. Third thing is that um, I really believe it prepared me to um, rise up, be the head of the house. You know, there comes a point in your life that you struggle to believe God's word. We did that for Isabel. And then there's like Chuck Yeager who broke through the sound barrier and suddenly everything is an overflow and it comes so effortless sometimes I'm afraid to even come close to her <laughs> in case we have another child <laughs> after having four kids I think it's enough yes. I want to enjoy the rest of our time together mm -hmm. and even now you know I know that there's an anointing in my life 
um, for you know to lay hands on children, on, on people, on children. And I've done this, and I've even told couples that I've married, be careful, I'm laying hands on you, <laughs> be, you're conceived. Today, many times over, when we sit at the dining table to have a meal, it's now like a color photo, you know, of our four beautiful children. So. You know, um, if you tell me God's word is not true, man, mm. I'm not going to believe that, you know. Right. My favorite psalm is actually Psalm 139 that really ministered and that I meditated on, you know, when I was believing for a child. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Amen.